Now we switch to previously uh, men, uh, called minor pathogens and disease uh, and pests. And uh, I will show the results mainly produced in the Innovine project. The main objectives are the identification of novel uh, sources for black rot resistance and uh, phylloxera resistance. But in contrast to the mildew uh, diseases, we have, uh, have to start with the establishment and development of uh, resistance tests uh, before. Um, black rot maybe is not so well known like uh, mil the mildew uh, fungal diseases. Um, it's a hemibiotrophic ascomycite and uh, it's mainly or all only present uh, in humid and warm regions and uh, it can infect all green parts of the vine and uh, it takes up to a longer period, 11 to 14 days until the first symptoms appear. And uh, it's like the mildew uh, fungal, fungi uh, native to North America and uh, came already with them in the 19th century. And in the last, well, the, in the following 100 years, uh, there were not really uh, damages documented in the vineyards were based on black rot. But meanwhile, we have increasing problems in uh, Austria, France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Portugal, Romania, and Switzerland. So we can see that black rot is present and is maybe a hidden disease. In Germany, we had a first severe outbreak of uh, uh, black rot in uh, 2002, 3 and 4 in the Mosul River Valley. And um, today we know that this fungus is uh, overwintering in abundant vineyards and uh, we know also that especially organic farming uh, viticulturists have severe problems with black rot. And, uh, as we heard already, if we reduce the plant protection measurements while using uh, mildew resistant or tolerant new varieties, we can expect that black rot will appear. So we have to react now and uh, have to look for new resistance uh, sources. So. For the establishment of the uh, resistance test, we built up a uh, resistance test with potted plants and artificial inoculation. And uh, the only advantage working with black rot is that you can cultivate uh, the, um, the fungus on petri dishes and oatmeal agar. And uh, here, we could uh, make also progress uh, in contrast to the old protocols if you supplement up to 10% must, grapevine must to the, uh, to the uh, agar, you can uh, increase the growth of the uh, black rot in vitro. So this is working and you can see on the right hand side that you can produce lot of amounts of spores for the spore suspension for the inoculum. And well, we started of course looking for a simple protocol and the simplest way is to use the uh, grapevines outside in the field. You can artificially inoculate them with the black rod uh, spore suspension and put a plastic bag on the shoots, over the shoots, to keep the uh, high degree of uh, humidity. For the fungus needs 90-95% uh, humidity for one day to establish in the leaves. And um, of course this is not so reliable outside. We did also experiments with uh, putting potted plants in, in huge plastic bags 
or even uh, cover whole um, uh, trays of uh, plants with uh, large foils. This is in principle working, but it's not so reliable. So the best uh, protocol is using a climate chamber where you can control um, the humidity and the temperature, the two uh, most important parameters. Uh, you are, of course, independent of the weather outside. You can do your experiments all over the year. And, of course, space is limited in the climate chamber, and uh, you need still potted plants. So you have started dormant cuttings. You have to decide how to plan your experiments in the winter. The assessment is the other point. In the OIV descriptor list, there is no um, assessment present for uh, blackboard um, rating. So in the beginning, we started to use nine different rating systems, counting infected leaves uh, using a four, five, or two class system, and so on and so forth. I don't want to go into detail, but this um, pre-tests were done with the bee parental population, the QTL analysis, just to check which rating system is the most reliable one. And as you can see, uh, the uh, five class um, rating system, uh, which is the highest um, lot value. Therefore, we kept the system for all following experiments. Here's a detailed description for, and one means uh, highly susceptible, and writing uh, class nine means uh, highly resistant. You can imagine this is a lot of work, and in parallel, we looked for an uh, alternative strategy, um, uh, in vitro bioassay, not relying on potted plants. Um, and for this approach, we used leaves, detached leaves, and uh, well, maintained it on water or agar to keep them alive, and uh, put in, in, in Eppendorf tubes, petri dishes, or put it on, on trays above water basin, and inoculated with different amounts of spore suspensions and uh, even uh, agar blocks with mycelium to provoke uh, the infection process. As I said, the first symptoms occur very late, uh, after 10, 11 days at the first. So you have to keep the leaves alive for this period. But in the end, we couldn't uh, uh, achieve this. So we kept with the system using potted plants. To give you a, a snapshot of the current situation, um, here is depicted uh, traditional varieties, new cultivars, and some breeding lines, which are presently uh, well allowed to uh, the plant or in the pipelines. As you can see on the left-hand side in the gray cloud, you can see well-known cultivars like Pinot Noir, Riesling, Primitivo, and some other German traditional cultivars like uh, Blau Frankish and uh, Scava Corsa. These are all susceptible, highly susceptible. In the middle part, you can see some new varieties. The Solaris you already heard about, Bianca we heard about, and Villaris. They show a moderate resistance or tolerance. And on the right hand side, you uh, couldn't find any traditional variety. You only find new varieties like Merzling, um, Felicia, and Caladis Blanc. And uh, Burner is a rootstock, in fact. And uh, you also see Via Blanc as a French hybrid, and uh, in this same group also belongs Seval Blanc. And um, if you now look um, that uh, or look precisely, new varieties or new breeding lines you can find in the gray and in the 
orange cloud. So in the past, it was not selected for black rot resistance. So we found black rot resistance in new varieties just by chance. So in the future, we want to do this more professional screening directly for black rot resistance and integrate them into the new breeding lines as we heard already in the previous talks. Here, we screened a set of 30 accessions from the group of American French hybrids. And you can see that uh, about 15 of these group, that's about half, showing very, very high scores, rating class nine, and uh, nine or eight. And uh, they are listed on the right-hand side and uh, for most people, these are really unknown names. But here is a, a set of um, sources which can be used immediately for breeding, line, uh, breeding programs. These are present in most uh, repositories. And uh, again, the red arrows shows the traditional, highly susceptible accessions and uh, the blue ones, I come to this now. Um, S means Seval Blanc, and uh, VB, Via Blanc, and G is a breeding line used in our house, uh, 47, 42. If you want to use these resources, you need and, and you want to apply mark-assisted selection, you need to know where these resistance loads are allocated in the genome. And therefore, you have to map them. And here is uh, a breeding uh, population, a parental mapping population, shown uh, across of GFGA 47, 42 times via Blanc. And uh, you can see both parents show some good black rot resistance or tolerance. So we expected, of course, in the F1 um, progeny, pyromided resistances, which is good for the breeding process. And uh, we did already some QTL analysis, and we found um, up to seven resistance low sites scattered all over the genome. So this is not what the breeder wish to have. Mostly they want to have one major locus, but it is like it is. Um, however, we could, could found on chromosome 14 a major QTL. And the interesting thing is that we, a couple of years ago, we already found with the burner population also a major QTL on, in this genomic region. And uh, some years ago, uh, Dalbo et al., which is a uh, uh, co-worker of Bruce Reich, already published in the same region uh, in a different genetic background, also a major QTL. So here are given markers, which can be used for marker-assisted selections. And uh, we think that this region and this uh, genomic um, part is very interesting and uh, important to analyze further. Um, our colleagues in Hungary screened a large set of 110 um, different accessions, vinifera and interspecific hybrids. And they found nine accessions, highlighted here in, in green, uh, which have a high resistance, and uh, nine uh, farther uh, accessions with a rather moderate resistance. And if you have a precise look, you can also find again um, Seval Blanc, or Burner and Felicia Villaris. And in these other um, terres, 
cultivars, there is in the background also sometimes uh, well-known accessions like Villa Blanc. But also there, are also, uh, here found uh, in Rotundifolia muscadine uh, species, also good resistance. So again, th these are good resources to be used in uh, breeding, breeding program for the next or the third generation. And of course, like Osvaldo Faya uh, showed us, uh, colleagues in Hungary screened a set of vinifera coming from the center of biodiversity, the Caucasian region, in this case, Georgia, and uh, almost 60 accessions were screened. And uh, here, two accessions could be found, which uh, show at least a moderate resistance. So the, the conclusion from this, or I should again show this uh, third group, uh, also the colleagues in Hungary uh, followed the approach to uh, localize the genetic locus in a population and they built up a population of uh, the Betis scenario background and screened a large progeny of more than 300 uh, F1s and um, they found a segregation of not uh, exactly but almost one to one and expected two genes behind this resistance. And uh, so here we can summarize that we found some good resistance resources which can be used for the future. And of course, we have to look whether these resistance are or belong to different resistance mechanisms so that we can uh, combine afterwards different uh, systems. Now I will switch to phylloxera, which is, of course, not a fungal disease, but an insect pest. Most of you know this uh, uh, insect, but uh, it's, of course, uh, important for the woodstock breeding. And uh, you know that uh, the roots are attacked, and this can lead um, finally to, to the death of the, of the woodstock and the, of the vine. And grafting was the solution for viticulture. However, most rootstocks used are not resistant, but only tolerant. And if you look back in the history, you can see that only a small genetic basis was used for the rootstock breeding. So here's again, we have to enlarge, we have to broaden the genetic basis for coming rootstock breeding. And in uh, Indra Bordeaux, our colleagues uh, are following uh, or established the following protocol. They uh, screened single plants uh, in a plastic containment to um, avoid any contamination. And of course, you have to do it with several plants per individual accessions. They used uh, um, clearly defined uh, phylloxera strains. We at Galvalhof used uh, leaf galls for infection, and um, as controls, we used again the highly resistant uh, accession burner and vinifera as a susceptible one. And what's very laborious for working with the phloxera is that you can't do the rating by just by eye looking. You have to deliberate the root system from the soil and to wash them and uh, cow, uh, cut the uh, nodosities, these uh, typical swollen root tips. And uh, in the end, you have to count it for each single plant. So it's very laborious and therefore the, uh, the, the, the throughput is not so high as for 
the fungal screening process. And uh, here are the um, table of the result from JKA. We analyzed Vitis estivalis seedlings, and uh, we can show that in uh, 12 seedlings, and uh, we, um, we found a high resistance, or no symptoms, I should more carefully say, uh, shown in green, dark green, but we also saw highly susceptible ones in uh, Vitis estivalis. So you can't say that Vitis estivalis is a resistant uh, species. You always have to look for individuals. And it will be a long, long way to use these seedlings or these material for new rootstocks. But it is a new resource. And uh, the last point here is uh, at uh, INRA in Bordeaux. They try to follow the same idea, mapping the phylloxera resistance in uh, muscadines. And uh, this is a larger issue. Therefore, they made a poster. This poster is in the foyer. It's um, made by Lalan, Tisni, and co workers. And I please you to go to the poster and look for the details. Briefly, I can say that. The whole population was phenotyped and the genetic map was uh, established and uh, the work is going on for the mapping of this uh, new resistance. Um, I thank you for the attention and here are listed the institutes um, involved in these tasks here and uh, I thank the EU for the funding and uh, my last slide refers to the wine tasting tomorrow in the afternoon. We have brought two wines from the new Cultivas Felicia and Caladis Blanc. And you can taste it, the wine, not the black rot resistance. And uh, just to give you an eye impression how these new cultivars uh, taste. Thank you for your attention.